the receptionist in the Whispering Sands Motel. Seaside, Oregon, a woman with a perpetually placid smile and eyes that held a chilling emptiness, barely acknowledged my arrival. She spoke in a monotone, handing me a key with a barely discernible tremor in her hand. My room, 13, was at the end of a dark, echoing hallway. My first night wasn't entirely bad. The room was clean, the bed surprisingly comfortable. I slept soundly, lulled by the rhythmic crashing of waves against the shore. But as morning dawned, a strange unease settled over me. The quiet of the motel was too profound, the air thick with an unsettling stillness. I noticed the absence of other guests, a fact the receptionist had failed to mention. My unease turned into suspicion when I glimpsed a dark stain on the worn carpet outside my door. It looked like blood, dried and caked. I couldn't shake off the feeling that something was terribly wrong. That evening, I decided to leave. But as I walked towards the reception, I noticed a flickering light under the office door. Curiosity, or perhaps a morbid fascination, propelled me forward. I pressed my ear against the wood, and what I heard sent a jolt of terror through me. It was the sound of muffled screams, mingled with the rasping of metal on flesh. My blood ran cold. I fumbled for my phone, my fingers trembling, and dialed 911. But there was no answer. My heart pounded in my chest, a frantic drum against my ribs. The screams ceased, replaced by a chilling silence. I knew I had to get out of there, and fast. I raced back to my room, my hand shaking as I grabbed my meager belongings. As I fled down the hallway, I heard a door creak open behind me. I didn't dare look back, my every instinct screaming at me to run. The receptionist stood in the doorway, her smile now twisted into a wicked grin. Her once placid eyes burned with a dark, predatory gleam. You shouldn't have snooped, darling, she hissed, her voice a chilling rasp. Panic seized me. I bolted down the hallway, the echoing thump of my footsteps the only sound in the oppressive silence. I could hear her pursuing me, her footsteps heavy and deliberate. The front door was locked, the deadbolt secured. I fumbled with the key, my hands slick with sweat. Just as I managed to unlock the door, a hand grabbed my arm, pulling me back. The receptionist's face was inches from mine, her breath hot and fetid on my skin. You're much too curious for your own good, she whispered, her voice dripping with malice. Don't you worry, darling, she added, her smile widening, we'll have plenty of time to play. I struggled to break free, but her grip was ironclad. Her fingers, strong and surprisingly cold, dug into my flesh. I could feel the blood rushing in my ears, the terror threatening to consume me. Then, a deafening crash came from the street. The sound of a car horn, a sudden screech of tires. The receptionist froze, her eyes widening in surprise. I seized the opportunity. With a strength I didn't know I possessed, I threw her off balance, my elbow connecting with her jaw. She stumbled, a low groan escaping her lips. I didn't hesitate. I bolted out the door, the sounds of her enraged shouts echoing behind me. I didn't stop running until I reached the safety of the bustling main street. The town, no longer the sleepy haven I had imagined, now seemed like a haven of salvation. I stood there, gasping for breath, my heart still pounding in my chest. The Whispering Sands Motel, once a place of promise, now stood as a monument to my horror. The receptionist's words, etched in my memory, were a chilling reminder of the darkness that lurked beneath the surface of the seemingly ordinary. The police investigation confirmed my worst fears. The motel was a facade, a horrifying front for a twisted game played by the receptionist and her accomplices. They lured victims, often weary travelers seeking a safe haven, to their lair, where they were subjected to unimaginable torture before meeting a gruesome demise. The victims, like the whispers of the sea, were lost to the sands, their stories forever buried beneath the weight of their tormentor's depravity. I escaped, but the memory of the Whispering Sands Motel and the chilling encounter with the receptionist still haunts me. The seaside town that had promised peace now echoes with the screams of the tortured, the haunting reminder of a dark secret forever etched in the sands of time. As I wearily settled into my room at the Moonlight Motel, 
an eerie silence enveloped the air. The flickering neon sign outside cast an ominous glow through the dusty window, and the stale scent of old cigarettes permeated my senses. As I unpacked my meager belongings, my attention was drawn to a rhythmic thumping coming from the adjacent room. Curiosity got the better of me, and I cautiously approached the adjoining wall. The thumping grew louder, accompanied by a faint, metallic scraping sound. A cold shiver ran down my spine as a horrifying realization dawned upon me. Summoning my courage, I knocked timidly on the wall. Hello? Is anyone there? I called out. The thumping abruptly ceased. I waited anxiously for a response, but only the oppressive silence remained. Fear coursed through my veins as I realized something was terribly wrong. Determined to uncover the truth, I slowly opened the door to the adjacent room and stepped inside. A wave of nausea washed over me as my eyes beheld a gruesome sight. The room was awash in blood. Scattered body parts lay strewn across the floor, and a mutilated corpse hung limply from the ceiling fan. The smell of decay filled the air, making me gag. As I stumbled backward in horror, I noticed a shadowy figure lurking in the corner. It was the motel's caretaker, a seemingly harmless old man I had seen earlier. But now, his eyes gleamed with a sinister madness. You found me, he whispered, his voice a chilling rasp. You're too late. The harvest has already begun. Panic surged through me as I realized I was trapped in a nightmare. The caretaker had been luring guests to the motel, harvesting their organs for an underground black market. And now, I was his next victim. I bolted for the door, but the caretaker intercepted me, his eyes blazing with malice. He lunged at me, his gnarled hands reaching for my throat. A desperate struggle ensued as I fought for my life. The room became a blur of blood and terror. I wrestled with the caretaker, his strength far exceeding that of a man his age. Just when I thought all hope was lost, I spotted a discarded scalpel on the floor. With a surge of adrenaline, I grabbed the scalpel and plunged it into the caretaker's side. He let out a piercing scream, and his grip on my neck slackened. I broke free and stumbled backward, panting heavily. As I watched the caretaker slump to the floor, a wave of relief washed over me. I had escaped his gruesome fate. But the horrors I had witnessed that night would forever haunt my nightmares. I stumbled out of the motel and into the dark night the sound of my own footsteps echoing in the stillness. As I made my way to the nearest police station, I couldn't shake the feeling that the Moonlight Motel held a chilling truth that had yet to be fully revealed. After a long, grueling drive, all I craved was a hot shower and a decent night's sleep. The motel looked like a relic from a bygone era, but it was the only option for miles around. The office was dimly lit, a single bare bulb casting a sickly yellow glow. The front desk was deserted, a worn leather-bound ledger open on the surface, its pages filled with faded ink. There was a faint, metallic scent in the air, almost sweet, like blood mixed with disinfectant. Ignoring the unsettling feeling that settled in my stomach, I grabbed the key from the hook and followed the faded numbers to my room, a small, dingy cubicle at the end of the hallway. The door creaked open, and the room was a mess. The bedsheets were stained a sickly yellow, and the walls were covered in what looked like dried blood. It was like something had been dragged across the room, leaving a trail of gore. My heart pounded in my chest, a frantic drumbeat against my ribs. This was more than a disreputable motel. It was a crime scene. Or worse. I didn't call the police. I didn't know why but my instincts screamed at me to investigate, to find out what had happened. So I started looking for clues. I discovered a hidden panel behind the dresser, revealing a dusty, cobweb-laden staircase leading down to a dark, unfinished basement. My pulse quickened, a cold sweat slicking my skin. What was down there? The air in the basement was thick with the metallic scent that had clung to the motel. It was almost unbearable like the smell of death warmed over. As my eyes adjusted to the darkness, I saw it, a long, stainless steel table, its surface stained a deep crimson. In the corner, a pile of bundled blankets lay discarded, and in a cage, a young woman, 
her eyes wide with terror, her thin frame shaking uncontrollably. My heart lurched. This wasn't a crime scene. It was a laboratory of horrors. And then I heard it. A low, guttural growl that seemed to echo from deep within the darkness of the basement. It sent a shiver down my spine, a chill that seemed to freeze my very soul. My eyes quickly found the source of the sound. A figure emerged from the shadows, his face contorted into a mask of madness, his hands stained red. He was tall and gaunt, with eyes that burned with a chilling intensity. He wore a white lab coat, stained and tattered, its pockets overflowing with surgical tools. Well, 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 he rasped, his voice laced with a sinister charm. Another guest from my collection. You've come to the right place, my dear. I knew I had to escape, to get out of this nightmare. But there was nowhere to run. He was already approaching, his eyes fixated on me with a hunger that sent a wave of nausea crashing over me. You see, I like to experiment, he continued, his voice a low, seductive whisper. I like to see how far I can push the limits of human endurance. He gestured towards the woman in the cage. This one, she's my masterpiece. But I'm always looking for new subjects. His gaze settled on me, his eyes gleaming with a disturbing, almost predatory light. I think you'll be a fascinating project. Don't you think? Panic surged through me. I had to escape before it was too late. I scrambled back, tripping over a rusty metal box. The metal clanged against the concrete floor, attracting the mad scientist's attention. Now, now, he said, his voice laced with a mocking amusement. Where do you think you're going? This is your new home, my dear. He lunged, grabbing me by the arm. His touch was icy cold, and his grip was ironclad. I struggled, fighting with all my might, but he was too strong. He dragged me toward the table, my screams lost in the darkness of the basement. Don't worry, he said, his voice a chillingly calm whisper. It won't hurt too much. At least not for a while. He smiled, a horrifying, twisted grin that exposed his yellow, rotting teeth. My life flashed before my eyes, a blur of familiar faces, fading memories, and unfinished dreams. I closed my eyes, bracing myself for the worst. Then, a deafening crash. The cage door swung open, and the woman in the cage darted towards the pile of blankets in the corner. She grabbed a heavy iron bar, her eyes blazing with a ferocious determination. She lunged, striking the mad scientist in the back with the iron bar. He let out a guttural roar, his grip loosening on my arm. I took my chance. I kicked him in the shins, then scrambled to my feet, snatching the iron bar from the woman. Together we fought. We hit him again and again, our fury fueled by desperation and the sheer terror of our situation. Finally, he fell, his body lying still on the cold, concrete floor. The basement fell silent, except for the woman's ragged breaths and my own pounding heart. We stood there for a long moment, the silence heavy with unspoken fears. Then she spoke, her voice trembling. We have to get out of here. She was right. We needed to get out. We needed to tell someone what had happened. We stumbled out of the basement, making our way through the deserted motel, our footsteps echoing in the empty hallways. But as we emerged into the night, we saw the storm had passed. The sky was clear, the stars shining like diamonds against the backdrop of the dark, moonlit sky. And as we watched, the sign of the Whispering Pines motel creaked and swayed in the wind, disappearing into the darkness like a forgotten nightmare. We didn't look back. We didn't need to. The horrifying truth of the Whispering Pines would forever be etched in our memories, a chilling reminder of the darkness that lurks beneath the surface of normalcy. We were free. But the Whispering Pines, with its secrets and shadows, would remain for others to discover, for others to fall victim to its horrors.